morning, good morning. I apologize, there is no music this morning. Sometimes my computer has a mind of its own, but it is well, it is well. We're gonna get ready to get started. So good morning. The psalmist declare, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh long for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Good morning to the early risers. Good morning to each of you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me for Word Empowerment Wednesday. I thank God for allowing us to see another Wednesday morning. And I don't know about you, he did not have to do it, but I'm so glad that he did. Amen. This morning, if you were joined with me, I'm telling you, I'm just having all kind of bloopers behind the scene. But to God be the glory. Whew, I was trying to cut, um, get my computer. I didn't want it to accidentally play music um, in the middle of me talking. So um, if you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do, turn with me to the book of Genesis once again. It seems like God has had us in the book of Genesis for the last um, maybe three or four Wednesday. Um, but let's see what God would have to say to us this morning. Genesis chapter 16. I am going to read um, verses 6 down to verse 14. I know that seems like kind of lengthy, but I want you to get what God is saying to us. I am going to read this out of the Letson um, English Bible. That is coming from the Letson English Bible. Um, beginning at verse number six, and the word says, And Abram said to Sarai, Look, your servant is under your authority. Do to her that which is good in your eyes. And Sarai mistreated her, and she fled from her presence. And the angel of Yahweh found her at the spring of water in the wilderness, at the spring by the road ashore. And he said to Hagar, the servant of Sarai, um, From where have you come, and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from the presence of Sarai, my mistress. And then the angel of Yahweh said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her authority. And the angel of Yahweh said to her, I will greatly multiply your offspring so that they cannot be counted for their abundance. And the angel of Yahweh said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall have a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, for Yahweh has listened to your suffering. My God. And he, and he shall be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and the hand of everyone will be against him. And he will live in hostility with all his brothers. So she called the name of Yahweh, who spoke to her, You are El Wahai. Mm, my God. For she said, Here I have seen after he who sees me. Mm. Therefore the well was called Bir Laha Waha. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. My goodness. The word this morning for um, the week and for the day is mistreated. And I'm taking that out of verse number six. The thought is, cost, is also coming out of verse number six. And the thought for today is rejected for purpose. My God, rejected for purpose. Now, I want to determine, um, define mistreated. Mistreated simply means being treated badly or unfairly. My God. This morning, I would like to take the time to deal with the Cinderella's. Mm. At, at some point of your life, I'm sure that many of us have been rejected. 
as we recall the story of Cinderella, she found herself at the mercies of her stepmother and her stepsisters. And previously, we know that her mother had died, leaving her all alone with her father. So now as she begins to grow up, her and her father became very close. And he began to treat her like a princess. So one day, he tells her that he is going to remarry. So at first, the woman and the two daughters treated her with kindness, but we know that all soon changed. Her father passes away, and now she is left now at the mercy of those who would mistreat her and reject her. Now, I want to define the word rejected. To be rejected means to be um, refused to grant the, um, someone recognition or acceptance. It's to discard an individual as being worthless. And many times, um, uh, rejection comes through favoritism. Someone else is considered to be much prettier or much smarter. It comes in form of someone not giving someone else enough time or enough attention. It can come from being um, the last one being chosen when you was in elementary school to be on the team because nobody really wanted to pick you because um, um, you didn't you didn't have uh, the skills to the, the um, to hit the ball or you didn't have the skills um, to dribble the ball down the court so you was always the last one being picked um, being picked to be on the team rejection can come from even being overlooked my God because of your your weight are because of your appearance my god rejection can come for being overlooked even when you have been on your job for many years and every time it's seen that promotion comes around you're being rejected my god so rejection simply means to throw away mm, to be cast off to refuse some, to be received, to be despised. And all and and you know, we all have experienced this at some point or another in our lives. And I've come to understand this morning that rejection is a painful experience, no matter what the cause. Mm, my God. Many times we don't assign even enough, oh God, blame to the rejector. Oh God, we tend to take on what someone says about us or what someone thinks about us. But I come to let you know this morning that rejection comes, my God, with a promise. There is a purpose for your rejection. So now we look at the story of Hagar. She was a slave who was brought into a family of prestige. She was already considered to be an outcast. Her name simply meant stranger. Mm. God had made a covenant with Abram in chapter 15, and he began to tell Abram, he says, No, not your heir, not your servant, but you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. He even take him outside, and he tells him to look up in the sky and to count the stars if you can. And then he tells him that these are the going to be the many descendants that you will have. So now we find, when we get to chapter 16, that Abel's wife, Sarai, had been barren. And during this time, uh, a woman who was unable to have children was considered to be cursed, my God. So in her mind now, she began to think, what can she do? Because she don't want to risk the, oh God, the, the opportunity of losing her husband because she can't have children. So she began to think to herself, my God. So she makes a suggestion to Abram now, why don't you sleep with my handmaid Hagar? And so we find that Hagar doesn't have a say in the matter, oh God, because she was obligated to do whatever her mistress instructed her to to do. Oh God, have you ever found yourself, oh God, in a place uh, where things are being stacked up against you? Uh, oh God, you can't look to the right and you can't look to the left. And sometimes you find yourself between a rock and a hard place. Uh, oh God, what do you do, Cinderella, when everyone, oh God, in town is invited to go to the ball, but you have to stay back home to cook and 
to clean, my God. What do you do, Cinderella, when it seems like, oh God, everything, oh God, is not going to plan. Oh God, what do you do now, Hagar, my God. Oh God, I come to let somebody know this morning, oh God, when you're being rejected, oh God, it serves a purpose, my God. There's a blessing in being rejected. So here we find that Abraham, he lies with Hagar, and then guess what? The unthinkable thing happened. Mm. So many times we make suggestions. So many times we ask God for certain things. But then when it comes into play, it's not what we really wanted. But then this is what we asked for. This is why the old cliche said you have to be careful what you ask for. And so now we find that Hagar, she is conceived. Oh God, and every time you turn around and see the be going on in the house. My God, have you ever been in a place? Oh God, I'm a witness to this. My father had four girls and every time I would go to the house, it seemed like, oh God, as we were growing up, if one get angry, the other get angry and it seemed like there's a lot of tension. Have you ever been around? Oh God, a lot of women, my God, and there's a lot of bickering, my God, and you the only man. I used to tell my father, let's go somewhere so you can have some peace. My God, so it seems like now there's a lot of tension in the house. And the Bible says that Hagar had, oh God, some tension. She had some, 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 some things going on that was, oh God, causing Sarah to feel a certain way. The Bible says now that she began, Lord, oh God, to have this, oh God, some resentment against, oh God, Sarah. I don't know what the case was, but many times, oh God, it has been said, whenever you lay down with somebody, you will pick up their spirit, or you begin to feel some certain way. Oh God, you know how it is. We all adults here. You know how it is, my God. When you begin to have a relationship with someone, my God, the person may not have, the other person may not have been there, but your grandma and your mama can look at you. Something has changed about you. This is the same thing that happened with Hagar. Something shifted, my God, inside of her. The cause her, oh God, to have tension against Sarah. But oh God, and then Sarah, oh God, even though she asked Abram to lay down with Hagar, oh God, she began to get angry. Oh God, she felt neglected. She knew something, oh God, it was something was terribly wrong. But she wasn't even, oh God, woman enough to admit it. She began to blame Abram, my God. But isn't this what she asked Abram to do? How many women today, my God, has asked your husband to do something, but it really wasn't what you really wanted, my God. And damn it, oh God, they do it. You begin to accuse them. You begin to look at them some kind of way. But this is what you asked them to do, my God. How many times, my God, have you went before God? He didn't tell you to go, but then when you go, you begin, oh God, to feel some kind of way. You begin to blame everybody but yourself. This is the place that Sarah has found herself at. Oh God, she went ahead of God. Abel, and I'm not even going to get on his case because he knew what God had told him. Oh God, every time you begin, oh God, to move ahead of God, every time, my God, you begin, my God, to do things in your own intellect. Let me and oh God, share something with you this morning. You will definitely mess things up, my God. Oh God, so here we find now, oh God, things are a little, oh God, a little hasty in the house now. Oh God, there's a war, oh God, between the two women. Oh God, and so El God, Sarah goes to Abel now. Oh God, and she begin to accuse him. Oh God, for what he has done. Although she was the one that asked him to do it. Oh God, instead of him getting in the middle of it, guess what he says? Oh God, what many of our husbands and spouses would say today, do what you think is best, my God. Because many times, oh God, men has found out the best, oh God, thing to do is to keep your mouth closed and agree with what she has said, my God. So here we find now that the Bible declares there's some tension and oh God, Sarah began to treat, oh God, mistreat Hagar. Hagar, oh God, says I'm not going to take this anymore. Oh God, I didn't ask for this. My God, what do you do now? Oh God, when you don't ask for something, what do you do now when you find yourself, my God, in a place, oh God, where you don't have oh no God of the choice. Oh God, and you find yourself now doing things, oh God, because you have to do them. And so here we find that Hagar, she said, you know what? I'm not taking this anymore. But then 
listening to. Oh, God, many of the patriots took this place, my God. Abraham took this place when there was, oh, God, he was escaping from famine. And so here we find that Hagar was trying to escape from her pain. She was trying to escape from her misery of being mistreated, my God. She was a running away from the will of God. And many times, oh, God, when there is disappointment, when there is hurt, when there is pain, my God, we tend, oh, God, to shrink back. We tend to throw in the towel. But can I suggest to you this morning, oh, God, you cannot heal from those things, oh, God, that you concealed. Oh, God, so the Bible declares now that the angel of the Lord found Hagar. Aren't you glad that when you are in a low place, oh, God, aren't you glad this morning that when you are in low debar, that God will find you? My God in Zion. And so the Bible says, my God, that the angel of the Lord finds Hagar and begin to ask her now, where did you come from? Where are you going? And I'm sure the angel of the Lord already knew, but he got the angel of the Lord want to know what you got to say about all of this. And so Hagar began to explain herself. She said, I'm running away from Sarah, my mistress. And then the Bible says something, my God. The Bible says now that the angel of the Lord tells her to return back to her mistress and submit to authority. Oh God, what do you do when God says, I want you to go back to that person that mistreated you. I want you to go back to that person that abused you. I want you to go back to that person that you knew that is talking about you. And I want you to submit. I want you to love on them. I want you to forgive them, my God. What do you do now when God says, oh no, oh God, you're not going to run from this. Oh God, you're not going to run from the rejection. But you're going to go back and you're going to submit. Oh God, and then the Bible says, oh God, the reason, oh God, oh God, he wanted her to go back. He wanted her to understand that she, oh God, had, oh God, a duty. Her duty was to serve her mistress, no matter how bad she'd been mistreated. Oh God, when I begin to think about this, I think about Joseph. We talked about Joseph before, my God. He had to, oh God, so God shrink back. He had to, oh God, let the tears fall. Oh God, but then he had to forgive his brothers. And what I love about Joseph, there was no retaliation. He began to tell his brother, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. Sometimes, oh God, God will have us, oh God, oh God, and go back, oh God, because we get you now. My God serves a purpose. Oh God, so here we find now that even when we talk about Cinderella, oh God, Cinderella now, she had the fairy godmother. She had the opportunity, oh God, oh God, to, oh God, to be blessed, oh God, even during her rejection. Oh God, she had the opportunity now, oh God, for God to move, oh God, for, oh God, for her to be moved, oh God. It was perfect that she lost, oh God, the glass slipper. So God, so many times, oh God, we have to lose some things in order to gain. And so here we find now that the Bible says, oh God, oh God. Hagar, oh God, begin to rejoice. And the angel of the Lord begin to tell her, oh God, submit. Oh God, but don't 
up. Oh God, but yet in Sarah's suggestion to Abraham, God had a purpose and God had a plan. Oh God, hey God this morning to every Cinderella this morning. Oh God, your rejection, my God, it has, oh God, a purpose. There is a blessing in being rejected. And I love what Paul says. He said that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And the psalmist declare, even if my mother and my father abandon me, oh God, the Lord will hold you close, my God. When you are being rejected, oh God, the Lord will hold you close. Oh God, and I say to you this morning that your rejection has a purpose. El Waha sees, he sees every tear. And I say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Now is not the time to throw in the towel, but now is the time. Oh God, to put your face, set your face as a flint, and to look to the hills from which cometh all of your help, realizing that all of your help, it comes from God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. God, we thank you and we honor you. God, we thank you for your word on this morning. God, we thank you for helping us to understand that even in rejection, oh God, there is a purpose. You have a plan. Even in rejection, oh God, there is a blessing for us, oh God. But you want us to do the right thing. You want us, oh God, to hold on. You want us, oh God, to trust you. Even in the midst of chaos, even when our back is against the wall, because God, we thank you this morning that you're more for us than the whole world against us. We thank you this morning, oh God, that after we go through the fire, after we go through trials and tribulation, there is a reward that is waiting for us if we hold on and if we hold out. So, God, we thank you, Lord, that you are El Wahai. You are the God that sees. We thank you, Lord God, that you see everything, oh God. You see what's being said, oh God, behind our backs. You see, oh God, how we're being mistreated. But God, you want us, oh God, to trust you. You want us to love. You want us, oh God, to, oh God, to love on those that persecute us. To love on those that hate on us. So God, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you. So God, we seal this word. Oh, God, by the blood of Jesus, we come against backlash, delay, or immediate. We counsel every plot and scheme of the enemy. And God, we say, oh, God, that it is so and so it is. In Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. Listen, listen, listen. Please share this video with others. Oh, God, I'm sure, oh, God, that many, oh, God, are going. There may be somebody that's going through a test. There may be somebody that is going through a trial that can't see no God to get their oh God their head above water. Let them know this morning that God is El Wahai. He is the God that sees everything. Oh God. Nothing oh God is hidden from him. He sees every tear. And guess what? He oh God he's close to the broken hearted. He is close to the contrite spirit. He is saying come my daughter. He is saying come my son. Now, God, take your rest. I see it. I got you. You trusted me. And I say to you, don't do harm to those that mistreat you. Oh, God, don't. Oh, God, my God, hold bitterness in your heart. But allow God to heal. Allow God to do what needs to be done. I promise you, you will win in the end. Your rejection serves a purpose. Your rejection is a blessing, my God. God wants to do something, but you have got to let some things go. I 
know you don't understand. I know you got to forgive, my God. Forgiveness is not for, oh God, the other person. Forgiveness is to set you free. What good is it? What is it going to do but cause more pain for you? Let it go this morning and understand that we serve a God who is all seeing. He is all knowing and he cares about you. Even with Hagar, he had a plan. Even though Ishmael wasn't a promised son, he still blessed him. Mm. Oh, God, that's good right there. He still blessed him. Oh, God, he saw Hagar. He still blessed Ishmael, although he wasn't the promised child. And trust me, this morning, he's going to do the same for you. Listen, if you have, oh, God, nothing else to do tonight, I invite you to join me, even if you do have something to do. Come join me at 830 tonight as we come together, touching and agreeing and praying. And you can find my number. Go to Kimberly Perkins Furby. My page is open. Go to that page where you may find a flyer. Or just come to this page. It, there, there's some flyers on this page, Seeking the Face of God Ministry, that will give you the call-in number and the access code. Join us in prayer tonight at 830. And listen, this coming Friday at 730 p.m. by way of conference call, the same number and the same access code. Join the women in prayer. Listen, I have been receiving a lot of praise reports because guess what? God hears the prayers of his sons and his daughters. My God, please join us this Friday night at 7.30 p.m. where the women in prayer will come together touching and agreeing. And listen, if you can't join us on tonight, if you can't join us this coming Friday, join us on Monday. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, we have been studying a book entitled, Are We Really Friends? Listen, the book is by Dr. Patricia McLord. If you don't have the book, it's okay. Um, um, if, you, if you need um, a way of getting the book, please reach out to me and I will direct you. Listen, this book has been a blessing. We're only on chapter one. We're getting ready to start chapter two. And we have uh, the ones that have been coming on the line. God has truly been blessing us. He has has really been opening up our eyes and I believe that healing is taking place. I don't know about anyone else, but healing is taking place in me. It takes, oh God, a lot for me to hold back the tears. My God, so join us on Monday night as we are studying out of the book, Are We Really Friends? Um, um, and I know you may be asking why are we doing that? Because God instituted relationship from the very beginning and this is the area where the enemy comes in and tried to wreak havoc. And we refuse to allow the enemy to do so. So join us on Monday night at 8 p.m. by way of conference call. Now, if you can't join us on Monday night, join us back here on next Wednesday. My God, next Wednesday at 5 a.m. for Word Empowerment Wednesday by way of Facebook Live. Listen, I pray that each of you... Thank you, Miss Teresa. God bless you. I love you. Listen, and, and Miss, um, all of those that are on the line this morning, thank you, Miss Gilchrist. Listen, and other ones, Miss Kelly. Listen, listen. Please share this video with others. Oh, God, I, I, I just believe that somebody will be blessed, just like I was blessed when God gave it to me. You know, the, the, the one that delivers the word always are the first partaker of the word. Listen, your rejection has a blessing. There's a purpose for being rejected rejected don't count it as something oh god to harm you but count it as something to bless you oh god so listen how I, I pray now that each of you will have a blessed and wonderful day and remember something great is going to happen for you why because we serve a great great god don't allow the enemy to to just trick up your mind to cause you have a bad day my god as my godmother will often say be happy my God, smile through the tears. Be happy and just know that God has your back. He has your, he has your back. He has your front, your side. Listen, God is El Warha. He sees everything and God loves you. He loves you in spite of. God bless you and have a blessed and wonderful day. Amen.